office on. Desk and bench on. Okay, today we're going to go over the code running on the Raspberry Pi. This is the Python script that I'm using currently. First off, we bring in a few imports. This is my implementation, so you may not need this depending on how you're actually controlling objects. The next line is necessary. This is Flask, and that's what's running the web server to take information from if this then that. We're implementing Flask in the variable app. This again is more implementation specific things. These are variables that we use as globals throughout the process. I have a default set for the last set. So if the web service were to restart, it does not remember what the last set was, but I have a default on this. The next one is what the off value is. I have it right now to completely off, but there is a chance that maybe you want to leave it at 10% or 20% or however you want to do that to glow it for nightlights or whatever. And this here is just a quick little check so we can check if the lights are on or off. Is false is off, true is on. This here is for my bench relay. I have my soldering iron and a few other power supplies and things plugged into a relay so I can turn those on and off. I can make sure that they're off. The next, another implementation specific line, that's all the imports, the global variables that we're dealing with through this process. Okay, so next we're going to talk about these two methods here. Office on and office off. We'll call their respective methods. So this is how Flask works. Here's the URL that I typed into if this then that. It searches this URL and it Flask will rip this little chunk off and see it's exactly the same as right here. And that's what it's going to use on Flask to call this method to where I'm going to set the office lights to a certain state. This happens to be true and down here happens to be false. And the relay, which is on my bench plugging a few things in, true and false. Let's take a peek at these methods here. The first one here, we're pulling in global variables from the top, the last set, the lights off, and then the current status. So basically I send this state, true or false. If it's true, it runs these couple. If it's false, it runs these couple here. This is a method that I wrote, and this is the MQTT specific method. So there's no real point in looking at that. This you would have to replace with your implementation of how you're turning lights on and off. And then I'm setting the desk current status to true or false respectively, depending on that. Um, we will see this later in the toggle. It's not obviously used now um, because I'm setting specifically on and off. But later when we toggle, we're going to be needing that variable. The next one that we were using, set office really, was right below that. So this one I'm sending a true or a false. And pretty straightforward, I'm setting that global variable that we're pulling in to true or false, the same state. And then I'm setting that relay. Now again, this method, just like this one here, is implementation specific. So I'm not going to go over that. Um, again, real quick, if this then that, house office on. It's going to run this method to turn everything on. Off is off. It's going to turn everything off. Okay, these next few methods, these two specifically are identical to what's up here. They're just missing the relay stat, the relay method. That way I can say specific turn desk lights on, turn desk lights off, and if this then that, and it would set them on and off without touching the relay. So that's what these two are. I'm not going to cover that because it's the same as what we just talked about. This one, if I can create an if this and that statement that I can say toggle desk lights, it will toggle them. And basically I'm pulling in the current status and then reversing that. So if it's true, I'm making it false. If it's false, I'm making it true. And then I'm calling that same method that we covered earlier up here, I'm setting it my desired status. And then here, this, all this really is is just for 
troubleshooting locally if I'm typing this into my web browser I can see the return of on and off that it is working so that's what that one is doing this one happens to be where a lot of the difficult difficulty happens so this one I can say set office desk lights to a level and a color and it comes in so notice at the end of this URL here I have a couple variables and this is copied exactly how it is from my if this then that statement for this and in this method here I'm pulling these variables out and then doing checks and running accordingly with that so the level is a percentage and the color is a string variable that I can say red, blue, orange, green, white, whatever, and it comes in. So let's take a peek at that. Notice I don't have to put the variables at the end of here. I just put that and it finds it, runs this method. So it's pulling the, it's actually a JSON request is this method format here, or the, the format we're using. So the request.values of color, and I'm putting it into my color variable. This method here, it looks a little complicated, but it is really all it's doing is it's scaling it from 0 to 100% to 0 to 255. And it's also clamping it. This is a little, little method that I wrote um, that returns, you can send it a minimum and a maximum, and it makes sure that it is within that bound. So if you set a negative number, in this case, I wanted it um, between 0 and 255. So if I set a negative number, it would make sure that it's 0. And if I set a very large number, it would come back at a maximum of 255. And then I'm converting it to an int, so I have a nice round number to deal with instead of no fractions or anything like that. So that's what that's doing. The scaling happens by taking the request and multiplying by 2.55. So if I set 100%, multiply 2.55, that would give me 255. If I said over 100%, it would get over 255, but it would scale it back to 255 using this clamp method. So I could have split this up between multiple lines, but it's nice just to have it on one line. keeps the lines of code down in simplification. Then I am running this method here. We'll go take a peek at that. Just notice that I'm sending it the color string and I'm sending it, this is now an integer and not a string anymore. It comes in as a string and changes it to an integer here. So I'm sending that. So let's go look at this method here. I preset some of these values. So if I say, I could say red, orange, yellow, these are the ones that I've used and I set what I like for a look for all of those colors using this right here. So inside of this tuple here, We'll take a peek at red, for instance. Red, green, blue. 100% red, no green or blue. So in orange, I add 75% of green into the red to give a little bit of an orange. And then yellow, I did 75% of red and full green to give more of a yellow look. And these can be tweaked depending on your RGB, your LEDs, and stuff and also your preference you can change these to 60 or 80 or however you wanted to do that you could also put in as many of these in here as you wanted um, another trick too that I did I set levels right here that's what I'm returning down here I set it to whatever level I'm coming in so my white is taken care of right here by the way that's how I'm doing that another trick that I had is I did have in there for a little while something like this because it was a little blue and so I was able to take out some of that blue by doing that. That is a totally a preference thing but this is how I'm getting white. If you notice that white isn't in here. I'm setting it here and then I'm changing it and if I said white it would just set it back. So if I set a color that's not in here it's always going to set it to a level. That's why I did that because I could say monkey and it would return as white. So that's what that method does there. And then this happens to be the exact same method we've been talking about forever. 
if level is zero, this is going to equate to false and it's going to turn them off. So just a simple quick little way to, so I don't have to check if it's true, then set it true if it's false, it's as false. So that's what that's doing there. And then again, just for troubleshooting internally, I can set this. This is a quick way to, so I can double check to make sure that I'm parsing everything right correctly, that I'm converting everything, clamping it correctly, and that I'm understanding the colors and levels and everything like that. Just this happens to be that variable, that method that I'm using, the MQTT specific implementation specific method that um, will change obviously depending on what you're doing. The next step, we're going to talk about the relay and how I implemented that. So if this and that, I have the relay one toggle. I basically thought this way I can have multiple relays on the bench and do different things with them. That's why the one's in there. Pull in that global variable on how it was last set. I invert it there, and then I set it with this same relay method that we introduced earlier, setting it to true or false. And then this little chunk here is for the web again to say the relay is on, the relay is off. Just again, this here is the implementation specific, so you could replace this code with your code to get relays to turn on and off depending on how you're doing that. Okay, well, that's going to do it for us for this Python script that we have here. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. Um, that is all for today. Thanks. Bye. Bench off.